Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we are in St. Thomas, Missouri, the Church of St. Thomas the Apostle. Uh, Father Jeremy Seacrest here is the pastor, and I'm joined today by, you may remember, Bill Stein. We were just at his church at First Presbyterian in Kirkwood, and also Mark Schultz, who is director of music and organist at the Church of St. Timothy in Creefcore, Missouri, also just right outside of St. Louis. Right. Uh, we're here today for a little bit of a different reason. Mark and Bill are hosts of the King of Instruments, which is our weekly hour of organ music on the air in St. Louis. And so we're actually here to record uh, this instrument for that uh, for an upcoming broadcast. Um, but Father Jeremy, tell us, tell us about this instrument. Well, this uh, particular instrument is an 1897 J.G. Pfeffer, originally constructed by Pfeffer um, Organ Company in St. Louis, installed here um, after it was shipped up the uh, Osage River on a river boat. And there's indication that the inside of the case, uh, the name of Stephen Frederick, that brought it from Osage City um, to St. Thomas. And so it's nine ranks, uh, recently restored in uh, 2016 by Michael Quimby Organ Company of Warrensburg. And I'll add, you just received an OHS certificate for the restoration of this That is correct, yeah. Um, this uh, just a couple of weeks ago, it was awarded by the OHS, and so we had a, uh, a great uh, concert here with uh, for trumpet and organ. Well, let's take a look at this instrument. Let's see what we've got in here in our nine ranks. So we just have uh, one manual and pedal here. Let's start right uh, with the first stop, which is our stop by Paisen. Play a little of this. a wooden stop but it's yes I'm actually kind of surprised at the articulation there's quite a lot of it's shift. very clean and it it's got a nice flute sound but it's bold yeah as well mm -hmm. All right. uh, next to that we have an eight foot have eight foot gamba yes right, very bright and then our open diapason which some of is actually out here in the facade in the facade And then uh, a four-foot roar flute, which is by itself. Beautiful. Chipper little flute there, and that's a metal, I assume. With a, is, that, is that metal or wood? Uh, that would the be floor. wood. I was oh, going to say wood. it has a woodiness yeah, to yeah. it. So that's a four-foot wooden stop throughout, and yes. we'll have to look and see if it actually has chimneys like a real roar flute should. Um, play that with the stop diapason just to hear how that combines. Sound. Yes, All right. And then we have the Dulciana, eight foot. Which Mark, you said, is very much an echo. Well, that's, that's technically what a Dulciana is, is an echo diapason. Mm -hmm. So what we're having here is a foil almost to the, to the first open, or first open, the open. Right. When you start mixing things together, you goose that a bit with maybe the stop diapason, and I bet that even colors it and it builds it Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Adds that little bit of sizzle. Yeah, it gives us just enough. Uh -huh. Just enough. So we've only messed with two stops there to change it already. Very good. So then uh, the rest of the this division's over there on that side. So we have what's first? We have the four foot octave that goes above the eight. We go on up the chorus then with the two and two thirds twelve. Want me to leave the four. On yeah, let's leave the four. And see. I just add some brightness to the ensemble. It's not a real piercing twelfth in there, but then we have a fifteenth that goes on top of that. Out of just it's remarkably bold. Right. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> the st let's use the eight foot stopped diapase and the four foot flute and that fifteenth. How is that? So 
the two foot's not so big that it, it doesn't break the power flute chorus as well. So how does it work then? Just the eight and two. Uh, this is eight foot stop by pays and then two foot. color in that stop diapason that it almost as if there's a four foot on with uh, the two foot. The and ear so tells you. It's, and it's you, just you fills hear it out that. so nicely. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also have one pedal rank, the pedal subas, 16 foot. Nice and big. Six. And what it will do is if you push it back in halfway, it will quiet down to a leaf. Actually, closing the slider, the slider. Yeah, not letting as much air. Close it just a little bit, so it actually gives you uh, a forte That's and a piano. Even that bottom C still has tons of fundamental yeah. going on. You don't just lose it. Yeah. That's great. We have three more knobs over there. What's the first one? Uh, the first one was the original bellows uh, stop that is now uh, controls the zimbal's turn. So the stop you would pull to tell the person pumping the organ yeah, that we more need air. more air <laughs> now turns the zimbal's turn. Okay, well, that's a good use for it. And then we have a tremolo next to that. Yes. So if you pull the forefoot fluid on and then pull the tremolo on. Yeah, fast tremolo. Yeah. Talk about that. Yes, this is um, a, a dump tremolo. I think so it's just yeah, it's yeah. an exhaust. We've seen those before. We'll have to go take a look at it. Fluctuating the... And then we also get a coupler over there. That's just a yes, it's straight just coupler. couples the manual down to the pedal. Since you only have that one stop, that's handy. Yes. We have two presets on this organ. Um, piano and forte. So piano. what happens when you press piano? So, well, nothing. Oh, it's a, you press forte, and it pulls so on everything, except, everything except, the, except for the pedal. pedal. The, okay. the pedal's 16 in the coupler. And then if you push the piano, it takes off everything and just oh. leaves on the stop diapason and the dulcet. Okay. So you have to go full before you can yes. go full. And then, I see. So you can make a quick change if you need to. And I don't know if that will cancel the pedal. No, it won't. So if you've got your pedal on, yeah. You know, your pedal's yeah. already there. It's set. It just changes the, the manual stops.
Looking inside the console here, we can see the roller board in the back. There's the trackers coming up from the keys and then going back to the chest. There's that tremolo, dump tremolo. You can see the valve underneath it. That's where it just dumps the air out. And as we heard, it works better on the low end because that's right where the tremolo dumps out of the chest. So there's our tremolo action that comes right to this knob at the console and turns on the tremolo. Oops, it opens the <laughs> it opens the valve there, which is right at the bottom of the chest. It starts feeding the tremolo over there. So here's the pedal 16 chest, and we've had one little voicing addition of a beard there to help that one out. But uh, these are actually the back of the the case. The wall behind the organ is here, and then we can get up to the walk board there, and then there are the pipes. You can see the back of stop action here. The bottom two octaves are split on either side of the chest, and then the rest of them are all chromatic in the middle, so that roller board divides them up. So, so you see our roar flute is not wood all the way up. Four foot roar flute is wood for just the bottom, you know, just the bottom 12. And then we have a, I guess our dulciana goes, it's capped at the bottom. And then we have our wooden stopped flute there with the principal and gamba in the front. Now I'm saying that, can you play the bottom of the dulciana and see if that's correct? Yeah, I see. There we go, it goes to open there. So yeah, the bottom of the dulciana is capped and you can see the back side of the open diapasons where their sliders have been put in to help adjust the pitch. There's our zimbal stern, and then we're looking down on the pedal diapason. <laughs> and of course down there is where the handle is for the feeder bellow, so we'll check that out. So does anybody want to play? Mm -hmm. Please. Possibly the design of the case, considering uh, this was built in 1897, uh, and it's much more Victorian. It's a, a bit older style uh, with the crockets and, and the stencil work. Is that possibly this instrument was uh, there in the shop in St. Louis and was had been constructed earlier, and um, so it might be older than 1897.
the stops are on because the forte toe spoon has been hit, but now when you hit the piano one, this rod rotates and actually pushes the sliders back in from this side. And then the forte, let's go see if there's one on the other side for forte. Ah, it is, yes. So, you know, when, when I arrived here, uh, was assigned here as, as pastor of St. Thomas uh, in July of 2012, I really didn't, I had no idea what was up here, but then I uh, started uh, digging around and uh, finally got the old uh, blower that used to be located in the base of the bell tower, so it was drawing air from there, got it running, got the bellows to rise a bit, and she started making some noise. Um, that That's all it took. It, and that's all it took. Yes. And, and so um, I've nicknamed her, um, like many instruments uh, have names, I've nicknamed this one Phyllis. Um, Phyllis Pepper. Phyllis Pepper. <laughs> because uh, the first time that I heard the diapason chorus, uh, after the restoration, um, it just filled the space. And it's also harkening back to the, uh, the psalm that says, fill us with your love, O Lord, and oh, sing for joy. Go. So, you know, the, <laughs> trying, to, uh, to, trying to give her a name that's appropriate um, to her age as well. So now that we've all three played this organ, uh, what are your impressions of it as far as action, sound, quality? I think the action's a little on the heavy side, but goodness, it's responsive, and the sound is bold. And, and wonderfully enveloping, especially downstairs. Really? Uh, yeah, it's quite remarkable. It's interesting to play it after seeing it before it was restored and to see how she came back to life. Um, I think for a small instrument, she is so versatile. That's what you can do so much with the little bit that is here. It's is, amazing. Is this the kind of organ you would be happy to have to play every Sunday if you needed to. If this is, it's got everything you need to make a decent amount of music. The colors are here. Yeah, I found the action is a little heavy, but it's, it's nice. It, it's got a nice snap to it, and it's, it's, it's clean. Um, the pedal board took me a little bit to get used to, <laughs> but I'm happy. I was able, after a while, I started to feel comfortable. It's, it's only 25 notes, and it's not right where you expect C to be, and they don't line up, so the non agio thing. But it's not, it's not an insurmountable challenge. Yeah, you're right. There is a wonderful pluck mm -hmm. to, the, to the key action. But it's, it's deep action, it's so very, you're... Yeah, it is very, very deep, deep. <laughs> but it works very well. This is a great instrument, and I'm glad it's been restored uh, so that we can hear it today. Yes. And also, it's a bigger sound, too, in the room than I was expecting for a little box like this, but, it, but it's not loud. It's just full, and it fills the room. It's a good full and, ensemble. It's great for a lot of solo repertoire, and it's great for leading uh, congregational singing. Definitely. And kudos to Father Jeremy and also to the people here at St. Thomas for taking the initiative to restore instead of replace. Yeah, they've really Excellent. protected the piece this of is, This is wonderful. So this is the part of the video where normally I would uh, thank my helpers for showing me the organ. Um, unfortunately, something happened to that file and the computer wouldn't open it up. So instead, I will use this moment to say thank you to Father Jeremy Seacrest for opening up the church and showing us your wonderful Pfeffer instrument. Uh, and also to Bill and Mark, uh, thanks for coming along. It's always uh, great fun working with you guys. I want to say something about The King of Instruments. That's the radio show that Bill and Mark are hosts of here in St. Louis. It's on our local classical radio station. Uh, that's uh, Radio Arts Foundation. That station doesn't broadcast very far, so if you're not in the St. Louis area, you can actually listen live uh, by going to rafstl.org. That's their website, and there's a listen link where you can tune in and listen to their broadcast. Uh, our show is on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. Uh, that's central time, so figure out where that is in your part of the world. If you were interested in trying to get music on the air where you are, if you don't have Pipe Dreams or some other local show, you're interested in trying to get King of Instruments on the air where you are, send us an email, and we can talk about the possibility of bringing King of Instruments to where you are. Um, you can just email me, brent at organmedia.org, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. So, as always, if you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button and you'll get notifications of when new videos are coming up. And if you want streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, visit our three stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. I'm Brent Johnson, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.